Welcome to Sal's Classic Bodybuilding Archives. Today's episode is a special request by Jason Williams. And Jason wants to know the routine that Rick Wayne used to build his shoulders and arms. Enjoy, Jason. I train my arms and shoulders on the same day, during the same session. I hit upon the idea of working the arms first at one session and the shoulders first at the next, a process which eliminated the possibility of one area receiving enthusiastic workouts at the expense of the other. I cannot tell you too often that this routine is not intended for the beginner bodybuilder. The routines outlined here are much too advanced to be used by trainees with less than one years of training experience. Here is the routine that I followed on my shoulder training day. I'm a great believer in the habit of warming up the area I plan to train in preparation for the hard work that is to follow. I find the chinning movement and the parallel bar dip performed in superset style are wonderful for preparing the shoulders, upper back, and triceps for action. Three supersets of as many reps as you can manage will suffice. The two movements involve pulling and pushing actions, so you may be sure you'll get a thorough warming up of the muscles involved in the pressing and stretching exercises that make up your arm and shoulder routines. Take a grip on your chinning bar as illustrated. That is to say, wide. Hang loose. Now, slowly pull yourself up to the bar as high as you can go. Lower yourself with deep concentration on the muscles of the upper back. Breathe as you come up and out as you lower. Do not hang around waiting to do your next set of chins. Instead, you will walk over to your parallel bar dips and start dipping. This exercise is in itself a wonderful triceps builder. It also works the shoulders and pectorals, depending on how you hold your body as you go up and down between the bars. It should be remembered that the body will function exactly as you direct it to. Laze around the gym, cool out after every set, and your body will settle down into the ridiculous pattern. But train it to do the opposite. That is, train it to cope with an increasingly faster pace and it will adapt to that too. Your respiratory system, your cardiovascular, will get a thorough working out each training session and you'll ultimately build a body that is not merely good to look at, but functional as well. So now, on with the routine. Our first movement is a power builder. The press behind the neck will pack size on the frontal area of the deltoids and the trapezius. I like to take the weight off racks rather than cleaning it from the floor and wasting valuable energy. Also, I enjoy the movement better when I perform it from a seated position. Somehow, I seem to have more control that way. So, do as I do. Press the weight smoothly to a point just before the elbows lock out. Don't stretch out to full extent. Then, lower to within an inch of your trapezius before pressing up again. In other words, the movement must be continuous. Keep constant tension on the deltoids. Do not bounce the weight off your neck, whether you do it from standing or seated position. Try to get 10 repetitions on your first set, then eight more, then six, and for the last set, do four. You will be doing five total sets. Add weight to your barbell each set. Naturally, You'll have to push hard to get the reps. But then, did you ever doubt that? 
Of course you didn't. Your next exercise will engage the deltoids in a different way. It will direct the load to the middle area of the muscle, the lateral head. Full development here will give you the wide look that all bodybuilders strive for. You should start the movement with your dumbbells held against your thighs as illustrated, knees slightly bent. From here, you should raise the weights sideways at the same time twisting your wrists so that the little finger side of your hands are uppermost as if you were pouring tea. This twisting of the wrist will have the effect of positioning your elbows where the greatest stress will be placed on the lateral head of the deltoid muscle, exactly where you want it. You have to allow the lateral head of the deltoid to do most of the elevating of the weights to shoulder level. It's a great idea to try to hold the dumbbells at the height for the count of two or three before returning them to starting position at the thighs. Start with a weight that will allow proper performance of 12 repetitions. Increase your poundage each set for five more sets. Your repetitions will naturally drop, but you should do your best to get at least six perfect ones per set. Again, I must remind you about your workout pace. You'll get all the rest you think you need between sets as you return your dumbbells to the rack and pick out a new heavier or lighter pair. So now we have done one exercise each for the anterior and the lateral heads of the deltoid. But we have barely started working the muscle, however. We still have to attack the posterior section of the muscle. Otherwise, it will lag behind in development if you see what I mean. I can think of no better exercise for isolating the posterior deltoid than the bent over lateral raise. In the seated version, as illustrated here, you plant your feet firmly on the floor. You bend forward from the waist until your chest is resting on your thighs. At the start of the exercise, the dumbbells are positioned behind your feet. From here, you raise the weights nice and slow, no swinging now, to shoulder level. The arms are slightly bent. I strongly advise you to start with a very comfortable weight. Do 12 repetitions for your first set. For your other four sets, you'll be doing five sets in all, obviously. Take slightly heavier weights, but do no less than six reps. If you can't manage that number of reps without controlling the dumbbells, then stick to a weight that will permit perfect style. The development of the deltoids demands it. There you have it, three tried and tested exercises that are guaranteed to pack meat on your shoulders in a way you won't believe. I suggest you stick to the routine exactly as I have written it, sets, reps and all. The beginner will do well to just do three sets of the exercises outlined earlier and break into it gradually. You should also be training four times a week, upper body twice and lower body the remainder of the time. It should not be assumed that the listed exercises are the only ones which will develop the kind of shoulders that attract special attention both at the beach and physique contests. Far from it. I have merely given special preference to those that over the years I have found most effective for developing the different sections of the deltoid. Certainly, there are others that I have used with success. The point is, even though I shall list some of the other exercises, you should not allow yourself to be tempted into using more than three per training session, one for each head of the deltoid. They are to be included in your shoulder routines, but only to add variety. 
A change will recharge your batteries with enthusiasm. So, once in a while, you might care to substitute the press behind the neck with standing dumbbell presses. Upright rowing affects the lateral portion of the deltoids, though hardly to the extent achieved with laterals. The weight is pulled upwards from the illustrated position until the bar is practically touching your throat. My hands are held close together, elbows pointing upwards. The weight is never allowed to drop back to starting position. It is deliberately lowered. Pulleys are really wonderful for performing lateral movements. Indeed, they eliminate the tendency to cheat, as it is so easily done when dumbbells are used. The modus operandi here is the same as with the dumbbells version. Pulleys seem to maintain tension on the deltoids more effectively than weights, but you'll have to discover for yourself whether this is true in your case or not. As I have suggested elsewhere already, you should experiment once in a while. It is the only way to discovering what suits you best in bodybuilding. As I say, try them all. Well, thank you for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Please leave a like, a comment, share, and subscribe. I would appreciate it. And until the next video, keep training and chasing the dream.